Today's video will be fun and easy. We'll be painting a family of tomatoes. Let's explore warm shades on our palette. Welcome to Tamarab Studio. To paint this cute family of tomatoes, I am going to use every single warm shade that I have on my palette. I just love that reference photo because it gives me opportunity to use all my reds. This video is made as an additional demonstration for my class Radiant Red that you can find on my website tamirab.com. If you're interested in learning how to select colors for your palette, in this case I will be concentrating on red, but it applies to every color that you choose then you need to watch this class and in this painting I will definitely be using every shade of red, orange and yellow that I have on my palette with a little bit of sap green and French ultramarine. So my first layer will be the object color. You see the colors that I use on the screen. I'm starting in the upper right corner. I'm just going to paint those first four tomatoes. And I am immediately adding a cooler shade of that Crimson Lake, which on my palette would be Senelia's Magenta, on the shadow side of those tomatoes to start creating a core shadow. So I want to immediately start working on volume in my tomatoes. And for green, I am going to use an underwash of yellow just to give it more luminosity, make it warmer. And then before the paint dries, I am dropping in the green shade. I started in the up corner and then switched to the bottom because I wanted to let the colors on top dry a little bit. I don't want to go sequentially because then paint might run from one tomato to the next. So letting the top tomatoes dry a little bit while I'm working on the bottom ones. I'm using my favorite technique, wet on wet. After I applied that first yellow wash, I am dropping additional colors into wet paint. That's why you see that I'm working in little sections. I am not covering the whole painting with paint because I don't want it to dry. I want to drop in other colors into wet paint. Colors start to run and mix and I think that's what creates that soft watercolor effect that's very hard to reproduce with any other medium. So picking up some paint to have those soft highlights that each tomato has. I will also use white gouache at the end to accentuate those highlights a little better, but that variation of tone in the initial wash of color is also very important. Okay, let's go back to the top, let the bottom dry and work on the rest of those tomatoes. The little ones are easy. It's just basically a couple of colors, a couple of washes, and they're almost done. The two big ones in the center will be a little more complicated. With the big ones, I want to start with a warm wash just in the center, and then I'm going to add my Scarlet Lake and Sinelia Red to create the color variation in those tomatoes. They're, I said they're a little more difficult just because their form is a little more difficult. They have all those ridges and the stems and things like that, but we can and still get that done. Actually, if some red runs from the neighboring tomatoes into this one, it's going to be okay because there is a tiny little shadow there. OK, 
Okay, let's give a little more color to those little ones so with some Windsor Red. Remember that watercolor lightens at least two shades when it dries, so I'm working with very intense colors straight out of the wells. Don't be afraid to work with intense colors because you see it right now after the paint dry. It lightened quite a bit and I need another layer, a cooler shade of what I applied now to paint the core shadows on every tomato. So I kind of shift because my palette is arranged according to the color wheel. So I shift a little, just one step on my palette to apply cooler colors in the core shadows of the tomatoes. And still some colors are not cool enough, so I'm using French ultramarine to cool the shadows even more. So that's another way to cool your shadows is to add a drop of blue or a drop of green into the local color that you're using to cool it off. Notice that I'm not covering the whole tomato because I'm working on the core shadow on the shadow sides of those tomatoes. So sometimes if I apply too much paint, I have to lift it back with my brush and then wipe my brush on the paper towel. This painting goes pretty quickly. The active painting time was probably about an hour overall because it's basically three layers. So local color, core shadows, and details. The darkest darks and the details and everything was ready. So I really enjoyed working on this painting because it was a lot of fun to paint. The core shadow on the tomatoes, it will be the darkest where two forms touch because they kind of also cast a little shadow on each other. So you see that between those tomatoes, I'm making the shadow a little bit darker to separate them from each other so they don't blend but look like two separate forms. And I continue adding a French ultramarine into my shadow areas to make them cooler. I'll let the second layer dry a little bit and I am going to paint the cast shadow. You can barely see it in the photo, so I will have to do a little bit of inventing here. To create the shadow color, I use the same colors that I already use for my tomatoes to keep my painting unified. And also by mixing the shadow color and not using just one paint, I can vary it and make it a little more interesting, a little more colorful and give more visual interest to my painting. I'm going to make my shadow much larger than it is in the photo because I wanted to touch the edges of my painting to kind of anchor my tomatoes in space. They kind of look isolated, plopped into the center of the painting, but composition is important even in a simple still life like this. So I am going to fill in the space with the cast shadow and I'm also going to do a little bit of splattering to give even more visual interest and um, texture to my painting. I can do splattering with different colors, use some reds and some yellows. I think it all looks really good. We don't have to stick exactly to what we see in the reference photo. We can be a little creative. And I should mention that I'm working on 300 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. 
the brand is Kilimanjaro. I really like the quality of that paper and it's as you see it's very sturdy even though I'm spraying it from my spray bottle and I have all this water running over it, it doesn't buckle. Okay, the last thing I need to do is add some details, so small brush and just a few details. Those heirloom tomatoes, they have all the ridges that I want to show, so a little bit of cool color in there because it's all in shadow. We need to paint the leaves and the stems on the tomatoes. It immediately gives more realism to the painting. Mm -hmm. Another small detail to add would be the highlights. I have a bit of highlights on the tomatoes already, so I want to accentuate them even more. I'm not using thick white gouache on the tomatoes because they are not super shiny, they're not made of glass. The highlights are subdued, they're kind of matte, so diluted white gouache works really well for that. I added just a dab of water to my gouache and that allows me to paint those realistic highlights. Okay, my painting is done. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will have some fun with your warm colors on your palette. Don't forget to check out Radiant Red class on my website. I paint a lot more vegetables there and I think it will be really useful, especially for beginner watercolorists. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video here on Tummy Rap Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!